Welcome back to another episode of Week in Review from Citizen Citadel. This week we're going to take a look at the 3.2 PTU, the Drake Vulture Sail, and the Group System. So with that said, let's get started. So at number 7 we have the 3.2 update. This week saw the release of 3.2 to the PTU, available for Wave 1 testers, concierge and subscribers, giving us a good look at what's going on in the new patch. So far we're up to the ninth build, the 3.2i release, and according to the roadmap almost all of the features are implemented. There are still many issues to be resolved before the final release, and we won't cover the patch notes because there are just so many of them but I'll be sure to update you hopefully next week when the final 3.2 build is released. Many posts are appearing around the community about what's available in the 3.2 release. At number 6, we have sales. The Drake Vulture sale continues this week, though I expect with mixed success. There have been mixed feelings on the Vulture from across the community, and it would be interesting to see how that has affected sales. If you've been around the community recently, you'll likely have heard about the similarities between the Vulture and one of the ships from EVE. Both communities have been poking fun at each other, but it's all in good spirits. If you'd like to know more about the Vulture, you can watch my video on it here. At number 5, we have the Roadmap Update. This week's Roadmap Update is a much easier one than usual. 3.2 moved to 10% this week, taking it to over 99% complete. The only task remaining to be completed is the quantum linking, which is currently at 82%. CRG need to release 3.2 by this time next week in order to hit the quarterly release cycle, and I'm confident they'll get it out on time. Focus now turns to 3.3, which had a surprisingly quiet week. 1% gained with almost no tasks added, mission modularity and racing lost 4% progress this week, as two tasks were added, and the Aegis Hammerhead gained 26%, taking it to a 69% total. That's all for Roadmap this week, with no updates or changes to 3.4 or 3.5. Hopefully the coming weeks will see progress on 3.3 ramp up as development increases. Overall it's been a good week, and I'm sure you guys are excited as I am to see CRG releasing patches on time. At number 4 we have Lore Content. This week's lore content was an interview with the latest CEO of Drake Interplanetary, Andon Arden. After an earlier scandal led to longtime CEO Jan Dredge stepping down, Arden stepped in to lead Drake Interplanetary back to its former glory. The interview gives accounts of what happened, what the plans are for the future of Drake, and Arden's involvement in the Vulture, the first ship released since he took over as CEO. It's a good read, and there are several hints in there as to the future of Draken's Planetary. As always, I'll link it in the video description. At number 3, we have Around the Verse. This week's ATV focused on the updates to the group system due to come online in 3.2, an episode of Lawmakers Guides the Galaxy, but as always, we'll start with an update on the PU. Work progressed internally on facial rigging software for characters, being tested on various faces of the Vandal. Mining is moving to its final stages, with visuals and mechanics being signed off and it appearing in the PTU. The kiosks for selling and refining resources have also been built out, helping to build out the economy for the future of mining. The new party system is being tweaked, but full spectrum integration and chat integrations aren't yet ready. Power allocation has been added to ships and now works as intended. Balancing power allocation will hugely affect how your ship operates. Core tech continues to improve, with weather systems being improved recently to allow for things such as wind on Hurston. Many of the weapons have had some final tweaks to their audio, now sounding more realistic. That's all for the PU this week, so let's take a look at the changes to the group system. The new party system allows users to focus each other and then add each other to parties or contacts. Adding players to a party will then show a marker telling you where they are at any given time. The group system will play a big role in helping other features such as quantum linking to let the system know who's in the group. 
This will be used in the future for the lobby rework and will allow you to do things such as switch the chat to lobby chat instead of server wide. The new chat functionality is linked to Spectrum, so players not in game can use Spectrum to chat with their friends, organizations, etc. Overall, this is a great new way to play together and should make orgs much more useful in the future. Finally, this week's episode of Lawmaker's Guide to the Galaxy gave us a look at the Caliban system. If you've never heard of Caliban before, I'd encourage you to check this video out, as it has a long war-torn history full of controversy and mystery. That's all for ATV this week. The group system is shaping up nicely, and team gameplay in 3-2 is turning out to be very fun. At number 2, we have Reverse the Verse. This week's RTV again gave us a deeper dive into the group system and how it works, and as always, the community were given the chance to pose questions directly to the developers of this system. The 3.2 group system is a tier 0 implementation, and more features will be built up in the future to add more functionality, but you can currently group up and play together. Sending money between players, mission sharing, etc. are not currently in the game, but the initial designs are in place for these. There's currently no timeline for them to make their way into the game, but will be updated when that happens. The current limit of party size is set to 8, but this is subject to change in future. CRG have not yet settled on the final number, but it'll be 8 for the time being. The system is technically unlimited, but issues arise when groups get too large. The other reason is for the legacy code still in place to get you all onto the same server. This will be improved over time, when that team becomes available, and should allow you to have larger parties. Much of the old contact menu and systems are being moved into the Moby Glass, to make it more discoverable for new players. Moby Glass will be the Spectrum integrated side, where you manage channels, contacts, etc., whereas the HUD will simply be available for chat. You'll be able to select which chats appear in your HUD, and which ones are only in the Moby Glass. With the new party system, when you join a party, you'll be able to open any door on a ship that belongs to a party member, allowing you to move freely through their ship. When you join a party, you'll get a marker above the head of all members of the party to allow you to track them at all times. In future, all members will have access to scanning information, radar info, etc. It will be possible to create parties from outside the game via Spectrum, and Spectrum will keep a track of chat history from in-game for you to reference later. Fleet sharing mechanics are being considered at this stage, and CRG are looking at how they might work in the future, allowing you to share ships across an organisation. Party leaders have access to invite and kick players from a party as of 3.2, though this might change in the future. Currently only the party leader can invite, but in the future anyone should be able to add people to the party. If you leave a party because of disconnecting or other reasons, you'll have 5 minutes to reconnect before you're kicked and lose your role. That's all for RTV this week. Groups should make for a much better multiplayer experience in 3.2, and I'm certainly very excited to start playing with my friends. And finally, at number 1, we have the Community Overview. The community continues to be excited for the 3.2 release this week, with more people getting access to the PTU. There are bugs aplenty showing up all around the community, but citizens are enjoying testing new mechanics, exploring, and generally playing the game. It's great to see a new wave of enthusiasm appear as CRG continues to live up to their promise of quarterly releases. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments below. That's all from me this week. This was a much shorter episode than usual as CRG wraps up preparing the 3.2 release. Hopefully in the coming weeks, episodes will return to their normal length as development falls back into normal pace. Thanks for watching, like if you liked it, get subscribed for more Star Citizen content, and I'll see you guys in next week's episode of Week in Review.